Okay, Little Orphan Joe, take one. Okay, Little Orphan Joe. It was Christmas Eve at the poorhouse, and over a grudging blaze, the wretched inmate shivered, thinking of other days. Outside, the snow beat madly against the window pane, but within it was mockery homely, for Christmas had come again. Seated apart from the others, watching the whirling snow, with blue eyes, wild and haunting, sat little orphan Joe. He was only a tiny fellow not more than six years old, yet his childish lips were trembling with sorrows all untold. It was this a little boy's first Christmas without a mother's love. There was no one to tell him stories of angels who dwelt above. There was no one to caress his pillow or tuck him in warm and tight. There was no one to sit beside him or kiss him a fond good night. For love was unknown at the poorhouse. Of sorrow each had his share. Each had his own afflictions, his griefs and heartaches to bear. And each drank a bitter measure from the brimming cup of woe. And there was no time to pity the sadness of poor little homeless Joe. But Santa Claus would be coming, for tomorrow was Christmas Day. He'd pity the poor little fellow whose mother had gone away. He'd bring him some beautiful playthings like those of the year before. And after long, long heartache, little Joe would be glad once more. But would he come to the poor house? The little one's heart stood still. Then he thought of the poor keeper's children. Their stockings would be filled. Their fire always sparkled brightly, and the room was so nice and warm. His stocking could hang with the others. It would surely do no harm. So he took off his ragged stocking. It was faded, worn, and old. And he crept out through the passageway, his bare toes numb with cold. He paused at the open doorway, from which came a welcome glow that looked like a glimpse of heaven to poor little homeless Joe. All within was ready for Christmas. Expectancy filled the air. The children were tucked in snugly with their stockings, and which were hung with care. Their mother hovered about them, and she turned with an angry frown as little orphan Joe paused at the threshold, his timid face cast down. Well, what do you want? she asked him as he made his request. She hoarsely laughed and answered, Well, whoever would have guessed? You'll have to go back where you come from, where your stocking hung last year. Santa Claus will go there, I reckon. He'd never look for you here. So, closing the door so roughly, she told him just to go away. There's bother enough without you. And that's what she'd always say. He turned and walked slowly and sadly until he came to the entrance door, where the snow lay heaped on the doorstep and the wind swept by with a roar. Then he thought of the words she had spoken and whispered that he must go, back to where Santa Claus waited for the coming of little Joe. Out into the night he stepped bravely and struggled on and on, with courage that never wavered though his strength was almost gone. Strange, but some instinct wakened, seemed his faltering steps to guide, and there next morning they found him in the house where his mother had died. He had hung his pitiful stocking above the cold hearthstone, and had sat there watching and waiting in that desolate room alone. An eager, hopeful expression on his wee face plainly bore. His blue eyes, wide and haunting, searched that bare room over and over. At length he kindled with pleasure and cried, I've missed you so. Oh, mother, I knew that someday you'd come for your little Joe. Kind hands raised him gently, though the end was drawing near. Words for which he had hungered fell on a heedless ear. That room was filled with glory that no human eye could see. Unheard by the ear of mortals rang that wondrous melody. As safe from this world of sorrow, too bitter for him to know, the angels tenderly lifted the spirit of little Joe. The yeah, end. That isn't a tear jerk, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a sad one. So they ought to animate that. He died. His mother came to get him. Like in heaven.